to the four-man community demo. Uh, today is uh, March the 8th, uh, Women's Day, so uh, happy Women's Day to every, everyone. Um, as always, uh, we have uh, some content to show you. Uh, if you have questions uh, about what we're going to show today, uh, you can ask either on the YouTube channel, on the live chat, we will be monitoring that on the Foreman IRC or on Twitter. Although I would prefer the IRC and YouTube. <laughs> um, today uh, we have, oh, I didn't know this would be localized, but okay, it's just a date. So we have some uh, updates about uh, releases, telemetry, Ansible, uh, Toast notifications and auditing. And let's start. Um, so Catello 3.51 is out for, um, it's not an RC anymore or anything. Um, it should contain a few uh, fixes um, for stuff that was um, broken in in that zero. Uh, please uh, help us uh, get in uh, the 3.5 uh, branch as stable as possible. So let us know if something breaks. And we are working also on the newest release of Catello. Uh, 3.6 uh, RC1 is now ready for testing. So. Um, go to the foreman.org slash plugins, uh, click on Catello and uh, download the first RC to uh, check it out and test if it works in, in your setup. It helps us so much um, when we get your feedback. And also, well, Foreman 117 RC2 uh, will be out soon. Uh, RC1 is already out, by the way. So if you have uh, maybe some uh, test uh, instance where you can test uh, Foreman RC1 on your setup and give us some feedback, that would be great. Um, again, RC2, most likely next week. And let's start with the demo itself. Uh, we have uh, Ido. Uh, he's going to talk about fog over ex exceptions. And let me change the screen. And that's here. No. OK. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Um, so I'm working on changing how fog over it sends exceptions. Uh, the reason for that is that we are planning to support new uh, over it version, uh, which is version uh, four. And in order for that, we wanted to separate the entire logic of what over it sends and what Foreman sees. Um, so I've created a small, a new exception, which actually um, received the original exception and wrap it up. Uh, you can see um, the actual usage of it, um, uh, which is called exception wrapper that actually is being used. Uh, the wrapper actually received the entire uh, client script and uh, using method missing uh, execute uh, the client calls and when an overt exception received by the overt client we actually raising uh, the original the our new exception our usage is very very simple for that and as you can see here on the line I'm at at the moment, um, we are initiate the uh, wrapper with the client and sends the current version, which is three, um, to the wrapper itself. 
and as I explained earlier, it does the method missing. Um, that's it for now. Okay, uh, thank you, Ida. For some reason, I'm not able to see the YouTube questions. Um, so I'll keep on trying to, to get them and get back to you if, if some question uh, pops up. Uh, let me share my screen again. Okay, so next uh, we have uh, Lucas uh, Zapotal. He is going to uh, tell us a bit about form and telemetry, which uh, should be, well, it should have its initial, um, yeah, it, it has been merged for 118. So let us know what you have uh, in okay. mind for this feature. Okay, uh, switch into you. All right, thanks. Can you hear me? You should see my terminal. All right. Uh, so yeah, um, telemetry was merged, um, I think last week, and I have a nightly built here. It's a little bit older because nightly nightlies are now broken for a week, but I have uh, patched my instance with a with a PR. So in case you want to try try this, um, you need to wait until we fix this. Um, anyway. Why uh, I was working on telemetry? Well, as our community grows and it's super nice to to be part of this, uh, we see more and more users, you know, coming to us with some bottlenecks and problems. And until now, we've been uh, asking for various POTS outputs and top screens, and um, you know, the debugging was 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 really hard. Now, now we finally have something that uh, that easily can be plugged into a monitoring of any kind, and we will see uh, much more. Uh, so we will have actually raw data. And I myself was working. I thought that I I improved. Uh, I was uh, uh, around uh, performance, and you know, uh, only. A production deployment show that my patch, for example, was actually making some things even worse. So without data, we can't really, you know, do do much about this. So uh, the idea is simple to provide something that uh, that uh, uh, allows exporting of some internal data, things like timings, uh, counters uh, of our Rails application, and in the future, I would like to even integrate other components. Um, so the way this this works is. Uh, um, you go to uh, form, form and, uh settings, and our install doesn't currently set that you need to copy and paste this. The best resource for now is the um, PR itself. Uh, the pull request has a, a long description where um, you know everything I'm showing today is actually described, and I'm going to move that over to blog. I was a little bit busy last week with other things, uh, but um, that's uh, what, what's going to happen. So here you add a telemetry configuration. Prefix is just a prefix you'll, you'll see in all the metrics. And then you're, we, we have a two uh, points or two integration points. Uh, I'm, I'm going to skip the logger because that's just for debugging purposes to usually have this turned off. Uh, I wanted to have something that uh, integrates with the new newest technologies which are on a hype currently and you know uh, prometheus is a very nice very nice tool indeed so that's uh, one extension point and the other is uh, is you know the opposite something very old so uh, that's something that you know should work with any uh, monitoring solution that's that's the which is a uh, quite old and super easy a way of um, exporting data from applications and um, one warning though if you want to use prometheus it doesn't play well with a uh, passenger uh, because if you have multi multi process environments uh, then uh, you know if you connect to a prometheus endpoint because prometheus is, is scrape 
scraper. It's a pool-based mechanism yeah, that the Prometheus uh, gets the information from individual resources. You'll end up uh, being served by one of the workers and you're getting wrong data, actually. So we need to wait until Prometheus Ruby client is fixed. Um, but we have a workaround. You can enable uh, Stetch D and, and uh, then have a, that's uh, imported in Prometheus. That's what I'm going to show you today. So basically what I did is I enabled Stetch D, Stetch D here and I made sure that the port uh, of the Stetch D server uh, is correct, which is 915525. So then I, do I downloaded a few components. I've downloaded the Prometheus itself. This is the stable version. I downloaded um, node exporter which is a uh, um, agent that you know um, collects information from the uh, host itself things like memory CPU and stuff and IO stats and then stats the exporter which is actually a bridge between stats D and and Prometheus and the fourth component is passenger exporter which actually um, which, this is a kit checkout because I didn't find a binary um, and these things are quite new, so don't expect this to have this in Epoch, or I don't think that's in Epoch, or even maybe it's perhaps in Fedora, but this is sent to us own anyway. So this you could check out of Passenger Exporter, which pulls information via uh, Passenger Status command. So this is the command you you can use uh, here. We we see two processes consuming like 600 megs in total, and that this exporter basically calls that and parses the XML output and uh, puts that into uh, into um, a Prometheus. Uh, one thing, uh, if you want to enable this, uh, we have we we are currently uh, nightly and uh, most of the stable for performance versions are on Passenger 4.0, and there is a bug. Uh, that systemd private temps prevents passenger status from communicating with uh, with the passenger itself so you need to basically disable uh, disable private temps so that, that's that's how you do it basically for http service you you say let me just do this you say private temp false and restart http this downgrades uh, security a bit, but you know, enables you to gather information. So, so that's fine. Uh, pr uh, passenger five zero should uh, should have, should have been fixed. It's uh, it it doesn't use TMP anyway. So, uh, so let me just quickly show you uh, Note Exporter. There's no configuration. You just run it. I'm running this on in screen um, in the background. So node exporter is easy. Um, then there's uh, uh, stats the exporter, and for stats the exporter, um, actually let me just connect and uh, stats the exporter. Uh, we won't see that. I don't, I don't want to. I don't want to. Um, so for Stasty Exporter, uh, you need to uh, create a, what's called mapping. Um, and there is a rake task. Uh, the, the telemetry patch created uh, adds a rake task. Oh, I need to do rep. And there's a rake task there. Uh, telemetry Prometheus. That's the so you call this uh, break task and we'll create a mapping which I I put into TMP let's say TMP mapping file and it's just a YAML that tells you, you know the stats the packets stats the uh, metrics how they are mapped to uh, Prometheus metrics we have this uh, metadata in 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 form and telemetry and when you create a new uh, metadata. Uh, you basically tell tell uh, define what's what's what what which labels uh, you are actually using, um, and also you can define buckets for uh, for histograms. So this mapping you provide to the to the stats the exporter when you start it, and it will load up. And uh, the last passenger exporter is uh, you just run it. There is nothing uh, really uh, special. And the last bit is of course Prometheus, where you need to edit uh, the configuration file, which is 
it's pretty easy. You just, we are scraping for actually for components. Prometheus scrapes itself for some kind of a matrix information about itself it's not uh, super important now we have node exporter which by the, these are all the default port numbers so uh, it will work out of the box uh, so we are scraping node information for things like cpu memory and then statsd for the telemetry data from coming from foreman and then passenger from the data coming from passenger now that's it that's uh, you run it you enable you restart foreman and let me just quickly sh switch over i need to unshare and I hope I'm not running out of time, but now it gets interesting. And I'm sharing. Uh, so here I have a Foreman dashboard. And on the other tab, uh, I'm connecting to uh, Prometheus, which is by default port 1990. And here, this is the simple Prometheus interface. So the if you don't know how Prometheus works, it scrapes data and stores that into some kind of a round, round robin database kind of uh, that you know it keeps i think one month by default and the idea is to export the data somewhere else but you can still work with prometheus if you want so here we have a couple of we have a couple of metrics here and i'll i'll go quickly through some of them so uh so first thing information from the node itself things like this io cpu are uh, on node underscore something so uh, nice a nice thing and would be like disk io for vda device this is a vm so let's just uh, if i execute that uh, we see graph uh, there was some activity here or nothing really really important mm. as you can see you can basically th there is a query language there so you can create you can uh, actually mm, query uh, this uh, and um, specify your uh, your query using for example labels so here we we have two two devices so i can even specify that i i want to i just want to uh, sp particle device here i won't go into details of querying uh, i would like to do a deep dive and and stuff uh, that's scheduled for next week i hope so here we we see uh, cpu utilization as you can see, it's quite a quite a query to have this nice, uh, you know, utilization. It's aggregation of uh, uh, across all the cores. Uh, so as you can see, this is not my, you know, my own work. I copy pasted it from some some blog or something. Uh, let me just quickly, if I do, for example, node CPU, just you know. Just like that, you see that it's a lot of information, a lot of text, and it's actually, uh, you need to process the data. It's a row numbers, so you need to do something with it. Uh, in the deep dive, I'll describe what you can do. Now we have passenger current processes. Uh, Lucas, and it's over, over 10 minutes. Uh, you have maybe a last minute closing. Okay. Cool. Give me two minutes, and I'll go really quickly. So here, all the passenger uh, metrics starts with passenger underscore. So we see current processes, which, um, which what is important uh, is passenger proc memory. So we, we see two workers here, and we see it's reaching the, the, the scale. It's a little bit out of, but this is 300 megs each. And now I'll describe this in a, in a deep dive. So here we see rate of creation of active records. So these are actually telemetry data. It starts with FM rails, that's the prefix. And as you can see, we have we have a user uh, active model uh, instances quite, uh, you know, for some time. I'm actually running in a loop here. I'm running in a ho um, hammer host list in a loop uh, right, da right there. So it's pretty much stable. Um, uh, so you can see the, these uh, these active record instances are per class, so you can enable and disable individual classes you want to see. Here we have a duration or duration of uh, of, of uh, total request duration. To to have an average, you need to actually divide some uh, by count. Uh, then we have a bucket. So. That's what I'm going to describe in a deep dive. So that en enables you to see, you know, only uh, per, uh, per, uh, you know uh, requests that uh, that has been um, uh, responded in 50 milliseconds and, and stuff. 
and and yeah that's pretty much it uh, if you can easily do uh, ag aggregation of data like sums so this is you know sum of let's say uh, allocated some of ruby allocated objects in through the whole application across all the workers here yeah and, and this is it so uh, are there any questions i would have one um maybe you said that but i'm not sure how i got it how do i get the mapping file for s that's the uh, so you run a rake task and it will generate it for you. Uh, that's oh, okay. yeah, the idea is we have a, if you add, uh, when you are adding a, a new telemetry, so for example, I have a new pull request right now, which adds few three or four new, uh, new metrics into the application. I'm basically specifying some metadata around it, which are extra. And from those metadata, uh, it generates the mapping. The, the mapping is there for, uh, to be able, you know, the mapping is required for for a nice mapping between uh, UDP um, namespace and labels. So without the, this mapping, we would lose um, uh, mapping information on the labels, which are pretty useful. There is another question on the channel uh, from Himanshu Prakash. Uh, is this a graphical alternative of source report for troubleshooting? No, uh, it's not. It's actually uh, Foreman is a web application, and you want to see what is going on there. Uh, and so this is basically we assume that folks are running uh, some kind of monitoring in the field. For example, monitoring of uh, CPU and memory, and maybe passenger, which is a very good idea to have. And this builds on top of that and adds extra information. And this is more or less, you know, we, we are not going to gather this via source report or form and debug at all. Uh, that would be technically quite uh, difficult, uh, but we can ask a uh, user if there's some kind of a bottleneck and the uh, user says that, uh, that they have a Prometheus uh, uh, deployed, we can maybe construct a query and uh, you know ask for graphs, uh, ask for numbers uh, to see you know which controllers and actions are actually here. We can see these are, for example, uh, during total duration, average duration of, and we can see that uh, here maybe it's not visible, but this is a per controller. So we have notification recipients controller, uh, and it's index action, and we can easily see. Uh, so this is quite fast, uh, basically, and it's just an average. We, you can calculate much more. Uh, more on uh, on this, please uh, go ahead and go ahead and visit and join the deep dive. Yeah. Okay. So. Wait, I think I'm sharing my screen now. Um, so back to to the demo, uh, the PR that Lucas mentioned, it's this one, uh, 5096. You go to the four-man, four-man uh, pull requests on GitHub and look for the telemetry one. It's already closed. Uh, but in there, you will see some of the documentation that will be in 118. Or you can wait for 118, obviously. <laughs> um, next is uh, Abby, who's going to talk about uh, actionable toast notifications. Uh, there is um, a little gist that he's going to show. Uh, if you want to see that gist, uh, please go to this URL. Uh, so goo.glws and to ui. And I'm going to share. Uh, so over to Abby. Hey, Daniel. Thanks. So I'm glad to be here today and talk about toast notifications. Uh, so basically, what are toast notifications? Uh, toast notifications allow us to, to put some kind of UI notifications on the view. Uh, and what makes them really great, it's we can put actions we can put links inside the notifications uh, in order to let the user fix the error or stuff like that. So the first example I'm going to show, uh, here I'm in the users list, and you can see here my own user is the only user. And if I'm going to delete my own user, I'm going to receive this error. So let's see it. So I'm getting an error. You cannot delete this user while logged in as this user. 
uh, which makes sense. But now what's cool, I'm having a new button, log out. And I can click on the log out, log out, then log in as another user and delete uh, this user if I want to. Uh, so basically it's a great tool uh, for, for everyone to use uh, if you want to allow the user a way to fix the error. And basically it's not only for errors. Uh, for example, you created a new record. Uh, you can add a new link for undo, the creation. Uh, you removed something. Maybe you want to add a link for undo. Uh, maybe you, you want to send the user, some, you, you want to send some kind of information, and then you want to provide the link uh, to read more about it. Uh, so this can be really useful. So now let's look at the gist and, and see what we can have here. Basically, we have four types of notifications. We have error, warning, success, and info. Uh, we have another type called notice. Basically, it's deprecated. Uh, it's used to render the success notification. So, uh, how do you create notifications from server side? Basically, in all the application controller, you can run uh, all these four uh, methods, error, warning, success, or info. Uh, and just give a message, and it will create a, a toast notification uh, when you send the user to the next page. Basically, it's based on uh, Rails flash notifications. Uh, so here, I can easily create notifications. Now, if I want to create an actionable notifications with a link, I can just add, uh, I can just add a second argument with hash. Uh, I will provide a link hash, I will give a text, and href, and basically that's it in order to create notifications from the server. Right now, the only example is deleting your own user. Uh, and please, uh, developers and plugin developers, use it. It can really be a life changing for, for the customers. Uh, so, okay, uh, this is how we create the notifications from the server. Now let's see how I can create them from the client. So basically in the client, I have in this object, the window.tfm.toast notifications, and I can use it. For example, I can call the clear action and I can clear the current notifications. So for example, now I have this warning notification. Let's clear it. Let's put it in my console and clear it. Now, let's create some kind of of more notifications. Now I can use the same object and do the, and call the notify function. The notify function will, will receive a message and a type I can use. Again, we have error, warning, success, and info. Let's see how I can fire all of them together. Here I have four notifications. Now, uh, you are going to see how the success and info notification is going to dismiss automatically. As you see, they disappeared. Uh, error notifications and warning notifications will stay on your screen until uh, you will manually dismiss them. So I will need to click on the close in order to close them. Or call the clear function from the post notification object. Now, if I want to change the sticky behavior, I can do it by adding the, the sticky argument. Uh, so in this example, I'm going to do the opposite and, and keep the warning and the warning, uh, the error and the warning dismissible, auto dismissible, and the success and the info will be, I will need to manually dismiss them. So in this way, I can trick it and change the sticky behavior. Uh, now let's see how I can use it together with a link. Uh, so I will just add the link argument uh, into my object. Uh, it will have a children with the text I want to use and the href, the link I want to uh, forward to. So let's pass them and see how it works. Now I have four notifications together with link. For example, I have an error and I can click to fix the error. I have a warning and I can read more about it. Some success and I can undo or redo. And basically I can do whatever I want uh, in the links. Uh, so again, 
use them. It's, it's, it's really useful uh, for, for the users. Uh, basically, I think that's it. Any questions? Uh, I can't see any questions yet, but if there are some questions, uh, I'll make sure to uh, let you know. So I would have one, if I may. Yeah. Um, so this is absolutely great stuff. Uh, the actionable notifications are cool, and I can already see a few things in my mind like where I would like to apply that. But before I start randomly add more links, or I guess more plugin maintenance will, uh, are there any guidelines or recommendations or standard actions that we should provide? Like you mentioned, uh, there should be an undo or something like that. But if we start randomly adding undo to various actions, it wouldn't be consistent. So do you have any guidelines or, or recommendations on what we well, should Well, basically, add? I don't have any guidelines or, or recommendations about it. Uh, maybe we should open it up to discussions. and Because basically, right now, you can do whatever you want, yeah? And we will need to, to make sure uh, we are responsible uh, and do the right stuff. Uh, so basically, it is a good question, and I think we should open it up for discussion. Yep, totally agree. And also, you know, to help keeping the same uh, labels, uh, so very consistent. But yeah, thanks. Thank you. All right, so... Let's move to the next uh, presenter. By the way, um, what Avi just showed, um, it's on this URL again. Uh, and you can use it from both server and from JavaScript. Uh, next is the Ansible uh, reports. Uh, they have got some new improvements, which were done by Sebastian. It's, I think, the second plugin to get React on, to get a React um, component after Catello. I think the third is going to be, <laughs> is going to be remote execution. So. Uh, over to Marek, I think, because uh, Sebastian had a computer problem uh, today. So uh, it's all yours. All right. Um, so for those who didn't see uh, reports coming from Ansible yet, uh, this is how it looked, or uh, basically it was uh, even a bit worse. Um, the reason is, if you compare it to the Puppet reports, uh, that we receive a lot of data in form of JSON for uh, the Ansible report. So one improvement that Sebastian did already is uh, formatting of the of the whole JSON. So it's uh, nicely printed, as you can see in here. Uh, but if you scroll down, you see there is a lot of a lot of data uh, coming in, and uh, this is not a good fit for a table. So uh, Sebastian decided to improve that. And basically, here is the new uh, look for the page. So as you can see, uh, all the tree structure is now folded. And uh, you can interactively investigate uh, the data. So for example, you can see that in here, uh, some template, uh, some file was changed. Uh, well, actually, it was not changed. Uh, it's uh, no op. Uh, but you can see that there is a diff in here, and you can go deeper and see how it looked after and before. Well, you can see it was the same content. But if I scroll down this one, for example, uh, we have the standard output in here, which has 256 lines. So if I unfold that, I get uh, the messages basically from standard output. And because it's even uh, a bit smarter than that, uh, it knows it's too many items, so it folds uh, some lines. So if you're interested in more of that, you can just unfold that and see the whole uh, the whole output. The same applies also to the arguments. So if you want to see how the Ansible module was triggered, you will see the module arguments in here. So for example, in here, you see that uh, the name of the time zone uh, was supposed to be etc utc. And also here, you can have an example of a diff uh, for a template. So uh, before that, it was UTC. Now it's ETC slash UTC. So this way you can investigate the data uh, that you're interested in. But the whole page, uh, if I fold it again, uh, is still kind of usable. It's it's a table. Uh, 
which you can uh, see separate records for. Um, and if you compare it to the Puppet page or Puppet report, uh, that page remained the same. Uh, so basically, we just um, changed the way how we display the Ansible reports. And this is useful, or this is possible due to the fact that we are scanning the origin of the facts. So if you go to the reports uh, page, you see that we have this origin. So we have different views for Puppet and for Ansible. And if you're a plugin maintainer or, or someone who integrated other configuration management tools, you should now uh, add a code that registers your importer. So uh, this, you can see that I have few uh, reports in here which do not have any origin. Uh, and that's because they are coming from Chef. So uh, I'll need to add uh, a scanner for Chef as well. And I think that's pretty much it. Okay, thank you. So we do have one question, but it's not very specific. So the question is, any news of Ansible? Um, well, the, all the news that we have right now is uh, there is going to be a new release uh, for 117 users uh, as soon as possible. Actually, the um, packages uh, are in the making, so hopefully uh, very soon, and there's going to be another release for 116 users with some fixes that have been reported that um, uh, fix some of the stuff that were reported on the discourse forum uh, throughout the past uh, few weeks. Uh, if you want to know more about the current status of Ansible, uh, go to the foreman.org slash uh, plugins slash foreman Ansible. You'll see there is a 2.x version of the manual which contains uh, more information. Um, I don't think I see any more questions. So let's go back to let's go back to the next uh, to the next presenter. Um, so next is Swapnil. Uh, I hope I got that that, that right. Um, who is going to talk about uh, audits and auditing uh, many to many relations in informant? Uh, okay, uh, over to you. Uh, Swapnil. Yes, I'm here. Yeah, uh, can you can you share the screen? Sure, sure. Uh, yeah. Hello, everyone. Okay, so thank you. Share my screen. Uh, yeah. I don't see it now. Can I see it now? Oh. Uh, 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 can you see my screen? Yes, I can see it. Perfect. All right. So. Um, uh, it's a, uh, actually a quick demo, I mean, just to demonstrate the many-to-many -many, um, association, associational uh, auditing uh, between the resources. So um, I'll just uh, compare it with the uh, normal uh, like uh, auditing feature. Uh, so I have uh, two setups here. One is my local, is uh, the nightly um, setup. So this is the nightly one, and as you see, um, in the user, I'll just uh, click on a user, and I'll assign a role. So, and I'll save it. So it's saved, and now we'll see the audits of uh, audits of these uh, of, of the of the that particular user. So the audit says so the password changed from data to so I mean just uh, ignore it. It's an uh, issue that uh, we are facing, and we'll fix it. But you don't see the roles. Uh, change that we just did, right? So yeah, so this is basically uh, uh, can't be achieved using the conventional auditing um, audit or audit gem. So uh, with the new advances and the changes, um, you can actually you can actually uh, audit the 
associations as well. For example, uh, in the uh, in in this in this the uh, this is the local setup, which is the latest um, from develop branch of Foreman. So if I assign bookmarks manager as the role and save it, and then let's just quickly see the audits of this particular user. As you can see, the local user too has uh, roles changed from default to default role and bookmarks manager. Similarly, similarly, uh, we have uh, for user groups. Um, so in conventional way, user groups, user groups has basically uh, it's a parent and child uh, relationship for user groups. So this is a particular user group. And I will say that um, it has uh, first um, UG as its child, first UG named user group as its child. And admin user is part of this user group. And I'll also add auditor as a role. And if we have a look at the audits, there won't be much of it uh, as they are not audited in the conventional way. Uh, but if we do the same kind of changes uh, for user group, so in this case, uh, yeah, we already have uh, one underscore user group. As the child, we'll add two underscore user group, and we'll also add some users to it, audit users, and just for example, just for the example for purpose, um, and I'll add viewer and view host, and I'll say submit, and then if we have a look at the audits, you will see, yep, yeah, these, uh, I mean these associations are basically tracked in this case. The users, user groups changed from this particular user group, uh, that is user group three changed from one user one underscore user group to one underscore user group, comma two underscore user group. That is the new one that we added. And roles basically there were no roles previously, and we added bookmarks manager, view host, and viewer. And for users, there were no users previously. So we have added admin user, audit test, local user two. So yeah, this has been achieved with the um, latest changes. And uh, I just wanted to also demonstrate uh, code-wise. Uh, if if you can see my screen, um, uh, that is the Emacs text editor I have here. Um, in this case, I've added an association, uh, so, uh, actually an option called as association. Uh, I'm afraid we are seeing only the browser. Sorry. I see. I see. okay. Um, I'll stop my screen share and I'll just redo it. So that will take. That particular browser, uh, that particular window. Okay, I think I need to move it here. There it is. All right, and it should be visible now. Yes. All right. So yeah. So this is the option that uh, that has been added, associations, and, and against it the particular association that you want to basically audit. In this case, the actual. The actual model is user, and and the and the audited associations that ha, are we have added are uh, roles. All right, so yeah, that's the relationship between users and roles. Uh, particularly, I would like to mention that is there has many true relations, and those can be managed with the the traditional uh, um, audited gem. Uh, yeah, so this is the change actually. And for user group, yep, this is user group. User group actually has uh, many other associations. So it has user groups, as child user groups, roles, as well as users. So yep, once uh, so you just need to add uh, this option associations, and mention the array of associations that you want to track against the main object or the 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 model that you are auditing them. So yeah, that's uh, that's a small bit of uh, auditing that that's uh, as of now on develop branch or the latest one. Thanks. Okay. Uh, thank you. So I can see no questions about audits right now. Uh, in 
Okay, so we're about to finish, but if you have some questions, uh, please uh, either on IRC or or the Discord forums, uh, you can uh, reach us there. And let me just go back to to these slides and show you the last one. Okay, so these are these are uh, our main point of contact. Uh, if you liked what you saw today or you want to help uh, or you want to give any kind of feedback, um, please uh, reach us at uh, IRC, uh, Twitter, and um, on IRC, Twitter, and on the Discord forum. Um, I. I think there, it's not in a slide, not sure why. So I suppose everyone has already seen this, but if you haven't, this course, uh, sorry, community.theformand.org. And this is our new, uh, let's say, format for the mailing list, which I think it's been uh, well received. And we're happy to uh, uh, get, answer any questions you may have there. So again, thank you for listening to the demo today. And I will see you all online. OK. Uh, remember, next Wednesday, it's uh, Lucas, uh, yeah, Lucas Aplatal's uh, Deep Dive on Telemetry. So if you're interested in that, uh, we'll see you on Wednesday. OK. So thank you, and bye-bye.